Welcome to another edition of Come Live. On this edition of Innovations, we feature Mehul Shah from Ultra Red Technologies and he tells us about 3D printing in the manufacturing sector. What is its value? Does it support sustainable manufacturing? Don't miss out. But before that, here's a manufacturing minute. My name is Joseph Wairioko. I'm the counterfeit and illicit trade officer at the Kenyan Association of Manufacturers. One of the other elements that we are focused on is creating awareness to the various targeted stakeholders so that we can reduce uh, the vice again, uh, the extent of illicit trade from both the supply side and the demand side. And uh, we do this through collaborative initiative whereby we work with the multi agency team in order to carry out various targeted awareness forums uh, that target uh, the enforcement officers as well as the consumers. The reason why we do this is because the consumers uh, play a key role when it comes to demanding for illicit goods unknowingly and therefore creating awareness across board is very key so that we can lower the demand. From the supply side we also um, enhance the capacity of various enforcement officers uh, within various uh, enforcement institutions so that we can be able to they can be able to enforce against the vice. My name is Mehul Shah and I'm the founder of Ultra Red Technologies. It's a primarily a design services firm, uh, product design and prototyping. In the early stages, we only offered product design and it was all software, software based. Um, and as time went on, we invested in um, hardware prototyping and we have a very good 3D printing facility and we have a whole network of manufacturers that can basically produce anything that we need. Okay, so welcome. This is the printing room. Uh, we have a couple of different types of printers. We've got our mega machine here, our biggest printer. We can see there's one printer, a slightly smaller version of the printer and it's actually running. The machine works uh, in a very simple principle. We've got the raw material, the filament we call it, the filament. Uh, we have various different kinds of material, so the majority of material we use is recycled PET. As the material flows down this, down this filament track, it lays down and each layer, each layer is 0.1 millimeter tall. It starts laying down plastic, melts it and forms it layer by layer and slowly builds up the model. And we end up with something that you know you can actually hold and touch and feel. So this is a prototype bottle that the, the client can actually see: is this going to work? Are the clients going to like it? Um, so we've gone from design to a physical product in a matter of hours. This is one of our largest prints. Um, this was a, a challenge, a design challenge given to us by a uh, plastics company. And uh, the challenge was we had to make a very, very, very lightweight folding table. Um, so what we did was we came up with the design, used the software to optimize it. This is a foldable table. So we've got the legs that can pop out like this. This entire mechanism and this entire table has been 3D printed. Um, we were able to test this uh, before the manufacturer went to purchase the mold. Molds are typically very, very expensive. So a mold for something like this would cost about $150,000. Um, what we were able to deduce was that this design worked in this area, but where it failed was at the hinge. So we were able to actually address that. Um, we were able to address this issue and the manufacturer was able to solve that problem before he went to the mold and spent you know, tons of money on it. So this is where 3D printing is really, really helpful. Where you can test out your designs, whether it be how this mechanism moves, how strong the table is, how it looks, how it feels. You know, is it, is it easy to hold? Is this product gonna work for our general consumers? Um, and it gives the customer a good overview of their entire product. 
So an approximation is this, this kind of an approach where we design and we print something. This can cost about a thousand dollars. And what it does is it helps you save your money in the long run because you can optimize the mold and get rid of these kind of defects before spending $150,000 on a mold. So this, this is the material we use mostly. Uh, this is recycled, recycled PET. So all the drinking water bottles that we see, uh, they're taken, they're cleaned up, uh, and the flakes are then used to produce this material. Um, at the moment, we have to buy all of our raw material from the Netherlands, uh, but hopefully in, in the near future, there'll be recycling plants in Kenya that, that can actually take our plastic bottles and turn it into 3D printing filament for us to use and produce all these kind of products. So this is a custom thumb splint. Um, and the beauty with 3D printing is that we can take a scan, a 3D scan of the patient's uh, body, the patient's arm, and we can custom make a prosthetic or an orthotic that can fit uh, directly on. Now this is just a prototype device, but this is where 3D printing has quite a few applications in the medical space. We can do stuff like this. Um, there's another splint for a foot. Uh, and again, this has been custom made to fit a certain certain size. And that's the beauty with 3D printing. It can be very, very custom to each patient. Three D design allows a couple of things. Um, it allows us to conceptualize and uh, see our products in the digital space without ever having to physically make something. Right? So you can actually go to your computer and uh, pull up and design products uh, and play around with thousands of iterations without ever having to make something. Um, what it helps is we can really fine tune the product that we need um, to spit uh, to fit a specific task that you need. Uh, and it's a lot cheaper and faster to do that than to try and physically make these products and see if it's going to work or not. What we really encourage is to innovate and innovate in a way that they know the manufacturers themselves have the best idea of what products are going to work for their customers. They're the ones who interact with the customers, they're the ones who produce their products. So they're best place to do this, but where, what they're missing is the kind of tech and the skills required to design and make these products. Um, historically, everyone's been going out of the country and outsourcing uh, this skill. Um, and uh, what it means is that you get a skill base that's designing products for Kenya that are not living and you know, being brought up in Kenya, so they don't really understand how the, how the model and how the market here works. And sometimes it's not always optimal to what the manufacturer needs. Um, so what we want to do is start creating products that are very fit for purpose and making them very, very, very efficient. Um, and you can do that nowadays. I mean, the software capabilities are, are immense. This kind of software is available free for students. Right? Um, educators and students are allowed to access this software for free. So they can you know, look at uh, on Autodesk's website. Um, and in today's day and age, YouTube is one of the best learning resources out there. Right? So when we were getting started in this, uh, by the time I went to university and I finished university, the software we're using is a lot more dated than what I have today. Right? And what I had to do is keep my skill level up and keep practicing and keep training and keep practicing. There's always things I learn. Every day, there's not a single day where I'm not learning something new on this. So if people want to get into it, it's just a matter of, you know, put your head down, get on YouTube, get the software, start playing around with it. And um, you can come up with pretty much any design, you know, like some simple stuff from pen holders to car parts to, you know, parts for your vehicle, parts for your phone, phone cases, uh, anything people can start playing around with and, and start designing. Yeah, so one of the main challenges is a historical mindset of how Kenya's manufacturing space is. Right? There is a certain way to do things and 3D printing and what we offer is sort of breaking the norm. Um, so I spend a lot of time when we're meeting with manufacturers to actually educate them on the process first before we end up trying to help them in any way. Uh, 
So I think just educating the space, making people aware of what's available. Uh, this is new technology anywhere in the world. It's not just new for us in Kenya, it's new for the entire globe. So getting up to speed of where it can really impact people and letting people learn and understand <coughs> is, is important, I think, for us. That's where the biggest challenge has been. With, with 3D printing, um, we have capabilities to start making Kenya-centric products. We don't have to rely on importing products from outside or even importing designs uh, because most of our packaging uh, that we get, our oil, uh, oil bottles, our soda bottles, all that, the designs have been imported from outside. Right? Someone goes out, travels, they're like, oh, this is a nice oil bottle. Let me bring it back. I think it's going to work in Kenya. We can start changing that mindset to this is what people want. This is what I like. This is what represents our country. And we design from the ground up here. Uh, why not? And you know, then we can, we as Kenya, as a technologically advanced nation in the region, can start pushing the boundaries within our region to start with. And then we can look at exporting more. Um, I mean, we, we design products here that are acclaimed and are viewed in the US, in Europe, in Australia. Um, so there's no reason why Kenyan firms can't do that. Thank you.